everybody it's Catherine and we're here for Tuesday sewing so today I'm going to incorporate Tuesday sewing with another one of our easy little projects to do and I thought we'd do a little bit of paper piecing today English paper piecing now I'm not trying to uh, profess that I'm a great quilter I'm not you see some amazing quilts that people make um, if you don't know uh, Loretta from Sparrowhawker Designs she is an amazing quilter she makes the scrappy quilt she makes um, all sorts of different things she's she's really you know good at it I think that's her you know her forte um, but I do go to a, um, a patchwork and quilting group with some other uh, nice ladies when we can get back to normal and um, I do enjoy making quilts um, sewn quilts I usually more often than not I usually like to get these jelly roll sets from Moda Moda Fabrics is one one of my favorites so Moda or um, William Morris sometimes you can get some lovely fabrics and also from Liberty um, so I do get these rolls I mean I've had this this probably three years now this roll and I was looking earlier to see if it's got its name on and um, they're not always on the salvage and I've cut through quite a few of these let's have a look see if uh, see if I can tell you what it is I don't know if they still do this this set let's have a look at this one you must do the thing that's what it's called 100% cotton uh, moda and I think the quality of the cotton uh, you know if you're making a quilt that's going to be on display I think you may as well just spend a little bit more uh, and get really lovely quality so I can dip into those now generally the size I need to get my ruler um, paper piecing comes in all shapes and um, this is I'm going to make a, a hand sewn quilt thought I'd make a, a, a cover for a bed and just a little project that I've given myself for this year to do because it's nice just to sit in front of the television and and you can make these up really quite easily and I'll show you how I may be telling you all how to suck eggs you know they probably all can tell me a few things um, <clears throat> but I've set myself this project of making a quilt cover um, and I've treated myself to these Liberty fabrics now uh, I think I've mentioned Natasha makes before um, she used to be on one of the big crafting channels on the television Hacienda and uh, Create and Craft that sort of thing and she's now set up on her own so go out and check out Natasha Makes because you can look out for some bargains for expensive materials on there and she does what you call a half metre heaven so um, you get half metre of really good quality expensive fabric for example Moda Liberty which is where I got these from this was a bundle from her um, K Facet um, now I love K Facet uh, material for quilting uh, if you're doing a big quilt big machine sewn one but his patterns are usually a bit too large I find for doing these English paper piecing hexagons now you don't necessarily have to do hexagons um, you can do circles and basically this is an old tissue box so you don't have to have anything fancy this is a old bit of cereal box that's been cut out as a template and you can buy them so you can buy the pieces um, quite inexpensive these were free in a magazine actually uh, and these are, are, are diddy ones uh, diddy hexagons and um, you know if you don't want to mess about saving all your cardboard boxes but you know as junk journalers we do generally don't we always have bits of cardboard about you don't want it too stiff you know cereal boxes is just fine because it's easily bendable you know it's uh, it's a nice nice weight 
and uh, so you can get them the paper piecing I do tend to find them a little bit flimsy they are paper I find it easier to sew if you've got a little bit of card more of a card substance but um, what you do then is that's some uh, fabric let's get let's get a piece of this oh, I just love this I just love this mood as you know I've been cutting bits out uh, there is little bits of it in in the packs that I sold um, I'll be opening the shop I'm hoping to open it again next week I think we've given the we're still in lockdown but I think oh, I don't need them I think we've uh, you know we've done our bit to try and ease the ease the postage okay uh, but some of these are in my packs do a mixture of fabrics okay so the reason why I like these strips for um, this size now you always measure the side of the hexagon to give you the sizings so this is one this is a one inch or 25 centimeters hexagon the larger ones are two I believe yeah just under two um, of those size and the ones inside you always get slightly so that's one and a half cent one and a half inches um, so you always get a larger piece of fabric than your hexagon I mean that makes common sense but I you know took a while for me to get my head around it so these are cut and I'll show you how we're going to uh, sew them in a little while but these motor strips are ideal for making so you see this is this is an inch and um, you don't waste that much with these strips I do find that if you uh, get fat quarters or big big wads of material you waste there's quite a bit of wastage if you're not careful whereas I think these I mean they're usually about 30 pound for a Moda uh, jelly roll pack but as I say I've used loads I've made some journals in fact I've made one recently that's going to go in the shop with them um, and I think they're great so <clears throat> some people uh, buy the glue you can get temporary glue for, for quilting and I just turn the side down and as I say it's more fiddly so I'm going to do a bigger one to show you because my, you know, my, I was fiddling yesterday I clip it like this until I tack stick it tack stitch it even okay so I'm going to show you with one of these that I'm doing now these ones I've cut out I've treated myself recently to two different sizes of, for my Sizzix because I thought because I'm doing this this quilt this year and I'm going to be needing loads uh, and also I thought that I would put some packs in the shop in case you wanted to join in and it'd be far easier just to whiz them through on the sit well it still takes quite a bit of time um, but you know it was a good investment for me because I think it'd be nice to sell packs of fabrics uh, packs of the templates so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in so I've got two different size Sizzix cutters so that is the one inch and then that is the two inch and that gives you a good edge round so that you can fold that this in okay so we bend it over and the reason why I like a bit of this serial card I mean I think this is just craft card um, you've just got a little bit of stiffness there um, and I think it just gives you a nice crisp edge around your material so I start off like this I've got some little clips so you could put some pegs on it and I start off like that and put three on there then I want some needles I've got my big needle here it's big enough isn't it guys it's one of me so I've got my sashiko needle as I say they're my favorites they're very sturdy for going through card some cheap cotton cheap machine thread or whatever you have tacking cotton 
uh, to hand. Take my glasses off so I can see. <laughs> it's a dismal day. You know how lovely it was yesterday. The sun was shining and it was bright. It's so dark. I mean, it's gone 11 o'clock now. Uh, 11 a.m. here in the UK and it's it's dark so we've got all the lights we can have on so hopefully this will be okay and <clears throat> generally speaking I start I've got those in so I would start here so that hold that down and just be careful you don't stab yourself with this needle it is lethal <laughs> Lethal implements, you can see why we say this isn't for children, can't you? <laughs> you know, some of the cutting blades, etc. really. But this is a great sturdy needle to get through here. Now, we don't want it to be neat. It's, it's you know, it doesn't matter what your stitches are like, it's tacking. These are going to come out. And you don't have to do little dainty stitches at all. Okay, so when I come to here... I take my peg out and I hold it and we just do a tack stitch around the corner there making sure it's nice and firm because when you come to the idea is sorry I'm knocking you the idea is that when we come to sew them together I don't know if I've got two sewn together already um, thought I had These are all singles that I've got. Oh no, I've got one. We're going to sew them all together. And so the sharper your corners are, nice and sharp with your tacking, is how good this is going to fit. Because you'll find that if they don't fit in the corners, when you start to put it all together as a big quilt, you start struggling a little bit with it. Um, it looks a bit skew with. So... Davy's brought me a cup of tea. It's the first one we've had since our breakfast this morning. Okay, so I've got to there and I'm just going to use my clip on there. And then this is just how I do it. I work my way around, as I say. Some people, they put temporary glue down. Uh, I like to sew it. I know it's a bit of extra work, but as I say, I think it... Uh, because you get those crisp corners, I think it's it's better in the long run. Um, again, back to the corner. I tend to draw it down a bit before I do my to make sure it's nice and tight. It's just a matter of doing big tacking stitches. Take that off now. Hold that tight. Can't do too many at once because it does make your hands hurt after a while. You know, if you suffer the old arthritis like a lot of us do or problems, carpal tunnel and that. Um, but, you know, they soon add up when you do a few. If you just do a few in front of the television at night... Um, surprising how you you soon get a good stash done i mean if you want to if you're new to this just start and make a little lap quilt or something like that there we go <coughs> Sorry, I'm not saying much. I'm concentrating so I don't have this needle through my hand. <laughs> there we go. And there you have it. There you've got your hexagon. Now, I tend to mask me if I'm not, I mean, obviously recently. Um, I've got the Sizzix for Christmas but before then basically I, I got my template I drew 
loads of templates out so you know for an hour or so spend your time just drawing templates and cutting them and then the next day get your fabrics out and basically I just get a square of fabric and just make sure that you've got I mean roughly it's not you know it doesn't have to be uh, exact but about half inch to three quarters of an inch uh, material around the edges so that you've got plenty I, I try to be a bit too conservative at times with cutting and this is probably where the Sizzix is good for me as well is oh, I don't want to waste fabric don't want to waste fabric and I've ended up only doing about huh, you know an eighth or or a quarter something like that and not left enough and it's a struggle and then it starts fraying and you don't get the crispness so you know it's worth it in the long run I think not to be too uh, too stingy with your material so again you just get your I'll just show you again so I'll just go around it and I think these these are just quilters clips um, you can use pegs or you can use bull, little bulldog clips whatever you've got to hand really but I just just like these because the you know the small and easy okay so that's that part done now we're going to sew some two together now just in case you don't know how to do that um, so say for example we want these two um, the other great channel to watch sorry I'm gonna have a little drink of tea is Kate from the last homely house um, and if you don't know her channel oh she's lovely she's so lovely and um, she lives in this farmhouse she's got you know a few animals she's got cats and she's got a duck um, I've forgotten the duck's name now and she's the most amazing quilter for paper piecing she does a commission every single month of a quilt made with these now what she does is because sometimes you think well I'm not quite sure how the pattern's going to work some people they do a um, they will do a plain one in the middle and then they'll put all different pattern ones round the outside um, they've got an, a different colour done here and they'll just do like a big hexagon there for example like that say with just one plain colour and the rest the rest are the rest are patterned and they just do loads of those and then sew them together other people don't care about that they just do them random with scraps they've got left but what Kate does is she's got a bit of um it's I think it's a bit like wadding she's put up on the wall I don't know I'm going like this <laughs> my window wadding up on the wall there and she pins these so when she's done a few together she pins them up and pins them across the board just to see how they're looking and I think that's quite a good idea if you're going to be you know doing doing anything doing them all the time um so what was I doing yes we're going to um we're going to sew these two together for you right, I need to get my clips back I've got a box full of these somewhere I don't know where I've put them okay so we've decided that we're going to another one that isn't quite so that's a better one that was a bit thin that to show you so I'm going to sew these two together and these are all from the same range of uh, fabrics from uh, Natasha Makes uh, Liberty it is gorgeous quality uh, but I just look out for bargains okay so what we're going to do to sew them together is we're going to make sure that the side we want to sew we'll clip it at that side we'll clip it at that side so those two are together and the important thing as I've said before is to make sure that you get your corners exactly in the right position um, 
just so that you don't end up with wonky hexagons really. Okay, it's not going to be enough on that. So try and make sure you've got enough cotton to go across because it starts getting a bit fiddly if you've got if you run out halfway across the side and you're starting trying to make it look neat. So yeah, make sure you've got plenty. Sometimes it's a bit hard to judge, isn't it? If there's enough to go round, but these are you know small hexagons. Okay. I just need to man not off. So we're just going to sew these. Now this is hard because it's a big needle but I tend to, let me move that up there a little bit, I tend to come out where we've got this join here. So I tend to put it through where it joins. So Nelson, Nelson, dog's jumping up I don't know why <laughs> putting his claws up my back. Um, David's trying to entice him out. I try to get my knot under there, hold my knot under there and up again there. Okay, right that should be firmly anchored now and then just some, the, the, the way that I was taught and I don't always follow this because it seems to be more fiddly but proper quilters. So you go along the top edge of that side then you go along the top edge here so you're not going through your card template because they're going to come out eventually they're not staying in so again there we just go along the top edge small little stitches it's a bit fiddly till you get used to it but it's surprising it goes faster once you and then at this side, like that. There we go. Now, I have to say, I tend to... Well, we've got that thread. <laughs> it's that thread of... I tend to just catch it on a corner ways and go through the both together. I find that, I find that easier for me. So that way and that way and it's quicker I think. But the correct way is to go a bit up there and a bit across there. Um, so don't forget you're only going through the top. You don't want your little tiny stitches. You don't want them to show. But can you see I'm going across the top and through the top not touching the card underneath at all. Across the top. Sorry, I'm fiddling with it because it's. I have to have it up here so you can see it. Normally, you know, when you've got it nearer, it's easier to do. I'm not asked you how you are. Hope you're all okay. Uh, it's difficult when you're concentrating to chatter. But can you see? The soon you soon get the hang of it, and and you know. You, it, it's not as difficult as it seems when I'm showing you because as I say I'm not holding it close enough and it's not the best of light today need a good light behind you your television chair Put your thing on as well. This is the bit that I find I need to have my support on. Because um, it can make... It's always the left hand I find. I'm right-handed. It's always the other hand that hurts worse. You'd, you'd think... But if you think about it, we hold more stuff with this hand. And we do that a lot, that movement a lot, when we're holding fabrics and paper to cut, don't we? And I think that's why you wear the other hand out first. Mine's just, my body's just dropping to bits from years of nursing. We used to have to lug and tug people. We didn't used to have hoists and such like then. I can't, oh, I can't imagine how many hundreds of thousands of times I've lifted people. I used to lift them, which, you know, you don't do now. So 
same with the ambulance service, you know, some of them are a bit uh, retiring with dodgy necks and backs. Okay, so we've got to the end now and really I just do it again by going through the corner because eventually that will be sewn to something else. I just go through that corner, make a knot because this is permanent now this, this isn't tacking and then trim it. There you go and there you have it and really you know that's that's nice and neat. Okay so hope that's helped um, hope you've enjoyed that let me know if you fancy doing something like this if you want to um, do a little quilt same as me I'm not going to be doing it every week on Sewing Tuesday this isn't the project I got planned I have got another one planned but I think ever so often um, I'll have a session where we just have a natter and we make some of these so let me know if you would like me to put some of the templates bags of templates and uh, sets of material in the shop uh, if that'll be useful for you and uh, have a go at that you know start off with just a scrap of material cut yourself a hexagon out with some cereal packaging and uh, see what you think so thank you so much for joining me today um, I'm enjoying doing this little mini series I think some of these little projects you know we have to do when uh, um, we don't always film things like this because the you know the short and sweet but uh, I hope you've enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe if you have enjoyed it you know consider giving me a like and uh, thank you for joining us so I'll see you again next video bye for now keep safe